Welcome, Nate Miller, to the Uniweb interview show, better known as Hill T Manor on Twitter um, and in the writing community. Nate, thanks so much for joining the show, man. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. It's my pleasure. I uh, I'm excited to talk to you. Uh, you you are um, editor, founder of the Writing Community Newsletter. Correct. Correct. Yep. Along with uh, Wraith. So we can talk about her a little. Sorry, say that one more time. I say so. There's one other person that I founded the uh, newsletter with, and we can go into her in a little while if you want. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's talk about the newsletter. Um, straight up, like, what's what was the idea for it? Um, how did it, how did it come into formation? Like, what was your thinking behind it? Oh, I guess this was I don't know the, the my current Twitter handle. I've only had that up and up, I think since oh I don't know maybe I think it was maybe February of this year. And then uh, as I started participating in the uh, follow, you know, it was the follower Fridays and the writer list, stuff like that. And I started watching the follower accounts kind of go up and up and up. And, and I go, uh, you know, conceited and arrogant and excited about it. And it's like, okay, this is great. But then what I noticed was when I would put something out, you know, if, even if it was just a tweet, even if you hashtag the crap out of it, yeah, more feedback. You're not, you know, you don't get a whole lot. Sometimes stuff gets missed. And then, um, I guess what I what happened was I realized was the more followers that you have and the more followers that follow you, I mean, it's a little bit like sending a mountaintop and just shouting and hoping somebody hears you because your odds of it actually being picked up is it's kind of slim. Uh, and at the time, I started looking at it more in terms of our uh, of people advertising their books. So you would see a lot of indie authors, they'd throw their book title up with a link to Amazon and say, hey, you know, check me out. And I started wondering, well, how often do those get missed just by the sheer volume of tweets that people get get in their timelines? And, you know, nobody's going to sit there and just kind of scroll through. Right. So I started just kind of flirting with the idea of, uh, okay, well, what about a newsletter? What if we did something where, we, you know, we could advertise people's work? Try, try you know, just say there's not another method of exposure because there's not that much that's available to indie authors. So at that time, I threw a poll up and just said, hey, you know, okay, who's interested? And I let it run for a couple of days. And it was funny because on the bat on the other side of it, about halfway through this poll, um, another uh, user reached out to me and said, hey, somebody else is asking the exact same question about a newsletter. So that was where I met up with uh, Rafe, um, who is, I think her Twitter handle is at... Um, at TC, I feel, I feel good, it's the clouds above us. Um, but I met up with her and we started talking about it. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it just kind of, I mean, it's grown, um, I guess, to a point that I really can't, I can't imagine, or I didn't imagine this kind of growth and what we've had so far. It's, it's interesting what, what happens. Um as an indie author when you're, you're like you put yourself out there and you mm-hmm. know the people see your writings like yeah. that, need, that, that need creates such a um a growth of explorative ideas for people i mean that's how my show started was i was basically sick and tired of shout, shouting from the mountaintop <laughs> so nobody realizing you know and i got i got mad myself i was like this sucks man like being an indie author is freaking tough and I was like, we need a plat, we need another platform that people can see us, like get to know us better on, um, and that's how the whole show came about. Um, it's an interesting thing, but the, and the newsletter is obviously going to be highlighting people in the writing community, but you're going to be doing so much more, right? Correct. Um, it's actually it keeps growing because it, like I said, initially I planned for it um, as it was just meant to be book advertisements, maybe a couple of articles, just kind of something light. It was meant to help gain exposure. Um, But then as we've kind of gone further and we actually, we've brought on, we have a full staff of people that are regular contributors um, that write on a variety of topics. And then it moved into the book advertisements and then it, we just yesterday announced that we were going to start offering free book reviews. And um, that within the space of two days has completely exploded because we have uh, five full-time reviewers now that are working it. um, And we may have a sixth that we're bringing on. 
and they're completely they're just they're filled <laughs> that's unbelievable so i mean we're to a point now where we're about to stop accepting review submissions for the july newsletter um that we're going to start working on the first of the month and start <coughs> excuse me soliciting for the august newsletter but it's i mean then there's a bunch of other plans for it that we're um that i'm kicking around uh we're considering uh, making a putting a podcast element in play uh, because I know there's a bunch of writers in the writers community, community that do their own podcasts yeah so I mean really it's just kind of like we're trying to keep with the goal <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry about that seasonal allergies um, no we're trying to keep with the maybe it's from those maybe it's from those paintings behind you oh man it, it could be you know <laughs> <laughs> So no, I mean, the, the overall goal of the newsletter is to it's to connect the writing community together because of how big it is. It's just it's so easy to miss stuff. Absolutely. So, is your background in journalism? I mean, like, how did you? What 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 what's the story on you, man? My, my story is I have zero background on journalism. Um, my, uh, <laughs> even my experience as a writer, my current work in progress, I've been, I guess, working on for 10 years. I've only recently actually sat down and started making progress on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of what is me is I'm a 16-year active duty Air Force. Uh, that's but yeah, that's been my that's my entire job. The writing is has always been something. It's just kind of a uh, it's been sort of a part time hobby. Um, but for me, one of the biggest drives is I like helping people. So whether it was like through volunteering stuff like that, and that's kind of the catalyst that formed the uh, the newsletter. Is it's just okay. Well, what can I do to help these people gain exposure? Um, I mean, the fact that I have, I guess, a modicum of natural talent in reaching out to people saying, hey, you know, does this interest you? What do you think of this? What about this? I mean, I guess it, it helps. But no, I have like zero background in journalism, nothing in marketing or advertising. A lot of this is just kind of uh, just by the seat of my pants. But you've been writing and you obviously have a passion for writing. Otherwise, nobody works on a book for 10 years that hates writing. You know, they, <laughs> they, yeah, that's, that's they just true. stop. They just stop. <laughs> They're like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay, I can't. When, when I say 10 years, that's like 10 years off and on. Like, there may have been, I spent a week in 2010 thinking about the book and like, okay, well, I could do this. And then, oh, look, video games, and then I wander off and I lose it again for another two years. So it's, the drive is there, but I, I would say that the writing community, especially uh, on Twitter, really pushed and really helped me kind of get back into the swing of, okay, you know what, if you're going to do this, it's time to do it. Just get started. What are you doing? People who, can, people who have like a full-time job and then write multiple books blow my mind it's, it, because it's such a... Uh, it takes so much creative energy, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it takes it takes a willingness to be open and vulnerable. And when you're working out in in any kind of field out in the real world, being open and vulnerable in society, <laughs> you're like like you're gonna get destroyed half the time. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always it's always amazing to see people who can who can balance that. Um, but somebody who's doing so much service work, obviously being in the Air Force, it's just you're you're in service to your country. And I thank you for that, by the way. Oh, appreciate that. Um, it's an incredible. I mean, it's an incredible thing to be able to do, and not many people have that kind of capacity of service to want to be able to do that. Um, even if you do get paid for it, it's not like you're becoming a millionaire as an Air. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> So it's 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 fantastic, and I do, totally understand. Like once you take that mindset of being of service and helping other people, trying to do anything else outside of that becomes very difficult. So like trying to write your own book, I know can become right. How am I ever going to get this thing done? What's the book about, by the way? <laughs> Sorry, I sound like a smoker. <laughs> ah, I'll tell you what the book's about. Right. Yeah. No, um, okay, so 
whether or not anybody that uh, watches your shows is uh, familiar with steampunk um that is a it's kind of it's a second love um of mine that i've always really enjoyed so the book itself is um it's steampunk based it's all world built um in a world that i crafted most of the last years have been spent off and on kind of building it up uh but it follows um follows the, uh, I guess you could say, adventures of a uh, airship captain who doesn't trust, he you know, doesn't trust humans at all. So his entire crew that he's fitted his airship with is all mechanical, they're all robots. <clears throat> Along with a, um, there's a first mate that he uh, trusts more than anybody else. Uh, his name's Marshall, is also a service bot. But it follows their uh, <laughs> adventures um, as, I guess you could say, um, you know, smugglers. That is really the best way that I could put it. So they kind of they kind of uh, live on that that gray area between you know what's what's right and uh, what's what's illegal. But it follows them as they uh, interact with uh, or come into contact with um, the other main character's name is Molly, uh, who is um, a excuse me i've never actually had to explain this uh explain my work in progress before so this is different for me uh so they ran the molly after their airship crashes um and they are um what's the word they're committed into an insane asylum that molly has been sent to by her uh stepfather as through a legal loophole to try and get a hold of her inheritance so it follows that where they meet up with her and they they escape and it's um a lot of it is there's a lot of revenge and uh there's some violence there near the end of it when molly uh finally catches up with her stepfather along with um the police or the constables that are currently after uh bill and um marshall so it sounds like the, the majority of the story is done are you have you finished like a whole first draft of this thing Oh no, I'm only in, I think I just uh, rolled into chapter six. Okay. <laughs> so I've got, the, I've got the full outline laid out and everything that's going to happen, but um, like I said, apart from that, it's been very much uh, just kind of work on it as I can. Yeah, definitely. Um, and with, with the writing community newsletter, I'm sure even more of your time has been taken up. How much of the, how much of it do you put your hands into like you said there's going to be a lot of uh other people contributing on a, on a daily basis or a regular basis with articles and that kind of thing are you personally like going over each and every single article that's going to no. Be in this? <laughs> i would i would love to be able to invest that kind of time into it um yeah. but i mean at the same time so my background isn't <clears throat> it's not in journalism it's very much in uh like I said, I'm military, so what I try to do is I try to keep my hands on either the outreach part of it, where I'll reach out to authors, say, hey, we're offering this, or hey, have you heard about this? Or um, it'll be a lot of uh, coordinating. So yeah. I'll talk with my other admins, you know, say, hey, <clears throat> what do you guys think about this? Sorry, I have a cough drop. This is getting, this is getting disturbing. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is horrible. Um, so most of my experience with the newsletter is just a lot of, okay, guys, this is where I want to see us go. Um, this is where our, our uh, subscriber count is at. This is kind of where we want to get to. Um, not necessarily hands off, but I'll try to put, uh, like, JJ, uh, he's in charge of our of layout. So he'll work layout for the newsletter along with some minor editing. James, we have a lead editor that reads through everything. I don't know how he does it. It's kind of impressive. But he'll go through everything. He'll edit it. Um, if something is kind of messed up, he'll send it back and say, hey, can you contact the author of this article? Have him do some fixes here and there if, there's, if, it's, if it's like major or something that we can't fix on our own. Yeah. But most of my... I try to be very hands off, so because it's, I've got section leads that handle certain parts of the newsletter. So I'll tell them, you know, do your thing. If you have any questions, reach out to be reached back. We'll see what we can see what we can come up with. But otherwise, you know, we're all in this together. I got to trust you guys to do this because I, you know, I'm not going to micromanage it. Yeah, because it'd be, it be it would be too much. I can imagine at some point it's just like you have to trust other people to be able to do their job. How many people do you have? right now working on the newsletter 
Um, let me see. Um, I would have to. I'm sorry, I suck at math, so I'm trying to put together a rough a rough estimate. I think we're sitting right now at about uh, 20 uh, staff members that work on it. Wow. So that includes um, that includes all the admins, our contributors, as well as our um, our book reviewers that we just brought on yesterday. Wow. So that's incredible, man. Because I remember seeing it a couple months ago, um, and then being in contact with you a little bit mm-hmm. but i feel like it, the idea has has exploded like absolutely exploded and it's oh, become that's... this huge thing now which yeah, well, it sounds fantastic oh yeah i know and i mean and i would love to be able to sit on here and spout off that okay yeah we have so many subscribers and this is great like it's i think our subscriber count yesterday when i checked it or i'm sorry this morning we're sitting at about uh, 405 which isn't bad, um, but I mean, as far as numbers go, like our, our first goal, we want to get it up to a thousand. That's kind of the that's the ultimate goal. But uh, according to our uh, mail distribution, in the last thirty days, we've picked up seventy six new subscribers, wow. which is yeah, no, it's it's far beyond anything that we anticipated. I mean, and I'm not going to lie, I've been I've been involved in group projects before. Usually they kind of, it's like, you know, they start off great, they build up steam, and then everybody can, kind of real life kind of takes over, and it yeah. just falls apart, and people fall away, and this was different in that it hasn't done that, I mean, yet, I'm hoping that it doesn't, but uh, for, for the most part, we have, I mean, we're really fortunate to have um, a committed team. Yeah, it seems like getting up steam, I mean, the... It's like one of those things, if you build it, they will come, because it sounds like you're building something with a fantastic infrastructure. I mean, I've seen parts of it. It looks mm-hmm. it looks great. The layout and everything looks really, really good. Um, it looks like it's going to be something that's profoundly beneficial to so many in the writing community, not just in obviously showing people what work is available, but helping connect people. Right. And, and that's and that kind of goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning, is that that's very much the goal of the newsletter is helping out the community as well as connecting them together yeah which i'm excited about because i'm gonna have a page on there the that's true interview <laughs> show page <laughs> we gotta we got it's it needs a bit more work but we're, we're looking forward to making that part of it, making that a reality for you yeah it's exciting man i, I think and I talk about this all the time. Writing can be such a solely uh, independent activity that we feel like we have to do all by ourselves. But mm. the collaborative nature um, of coming up with fantastic ideas and building stories, mm-hmm. if we can figure out a way to do that, like that's what I think the internet is for. Like the the good uses of the internet yeah. is to connect us, right? It's like yeah. how can we how can we build each other up, and in any way possible like with the writing community newsletter with my show that's the whole idea is like how can we take what you're doing to the next level so more people see it Uh, it's available for more people because i think the stories behind it like just the idea of building that writing community newsletter making it happen give other people the courage to make their own things happen in their own life like oh they they can do it maybe Mm -hmm. i can try something like that you know and that's that's profound for anybody i think Right, and that's that's very much what we want. Is I mean, even if it's even if somebody reads this and says, "Hey, you know what? That's not for me," and they don't subscribe to it, or if they check the website out and maybe they find um, an editing service on it, because that's something else that we're going to bring online is a list of um, editors and copy like copy editors and other services that writers need for their novels. But like, even if the even if the existence of the newsletter and our website exists solely that that is all that person gets out of it yeah in some way if we can kind of give back and help them that's that's very much the goal i always think I always like if people if people aren't like subscribed to my channel or um <laughs> i'm like what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> i will interview you <laughs> for god's sake like, i think with all the reasons because there's so many resources that help us um get our get our works out there that if we're not using them all in some degree then we're just we're not helping ourselves right to get to that understanding like this is to help me this is to help me that's all it is like how can i use it 
Because mm-hmm. that's all these are. They're platforms to help other people. Right. No, no, it, exactly. And I mean, and in terms of like of bringing subscribers on, that was at the beginning when we were first talking, it's, you know, especially with like Twitter, if you throw something out, you say, hey, I'm doing this. It doesn't matter how eloquently you word it, you could use all caps and maybe people will see it. You could throw a bunch of emojis on it. The sheer volume of people that are, that are on Twitter you'll be lucky if you get five people that respond to it. So that was something that we learned very early on was in order to, I guess, in order to build up even like a subscriber base and anybody that was interested, we would actually have to go. I mean, it's, I would say door to door, but like tweet to tweet. If, you know, somebody was posting something out like their book, say, Hey, look, dude, we've got this. We're offering this. What do you think? Let me know, you know, let me know for more info. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, it's also it's also a very <laughs> difficult thing. <laughs> if you have if you have the manpower and the time, right, uh, it can become one of those things where you're just like, ah, uh, I can't. I'm so tired. <laughs> well, I mean, there's also that, and then you also get the. I mean, it doesn't even in the writing community. You got the. I'm sure you get them with in yours. Look at the bots that send you the you know the DMs like you know, hey honey, how you doing? Or oh, hey hi, and it's like. Yeah, okay, no. So yeah. then you got to be careful of, like, you know, if you respond to somebody in, you know, like, a tweet, you put, hey, DM me. Right. That's yeah, just, like, uh, you, maybe not, you know, okay, no, no, I think I'm not going to. You might be a creep. <laughs> right, because that's the whole thing. It's, like, let's build a relationship first, and then let's talk privately. Why would I just immediately start talking privately to some weirdo on the <laughs> Internet that I don't know? Right, exactly. Like, why can't we have this conversation in the open? It's like going out to a club and like grabbing somebody and like let's talk in this back alley. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly, and that's always been that has been my hardest part about this is like so not everybody on staff, and and they've even said they said no, we're not that great at doing outreach. You know, that's just it's not one of our strong suits. It's like okay, well I'll show this up and let's go make this happen. And then you run into I run into that issue where it's like if I put you know, we'll put out the, um, like the book review request yesterday saying, hey, we're, we're offering this, and people will, you know, pop up, okay, yeah, yeah, and will review it, and they'll throw a link to their book. It's like, okay, that's great, but that I can't use that just yet, so then I'll have to reply. It's like, okay, do I try to gnaw this out in the, was it the 240 character limit that I have on a tweet, or do I throw in, hey, if you want more details, I need you to DM me. And what I want to throw in there is I'm not a creep, you know, I'm not trying to hit on you. <laughs> Just kind of, you know, we got more details we have to discuss. I know. It's it's one of those things where you find out, like, especially with outreach, no matter what we do, it's we have to build a relationship. If we're not <laughs> constantly working to build relationships with people, right. and whatever we do is, and I think that's true of life in general. If you're not working towards building relationships with other people, no matter what you do, it's like it's not going to be worth as much. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. Yeah, this is 100% true. Right. The smartest people in the world sit in rooms by themselves talking to the wall. You know? <laughs> that's, that's accurate. <laughs> I know. I've been there. <laughs> I've, I've seen the rooms. This is one of them. That sounds like a long lap. I'm not going to watch this is, this is why, it's why I have posters of other people on my <laughs> walls because I used to talk to them. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. That's kind of sad. <laughs> oh, it's great. It was practice. Oh, yeah, that's okay. If it's, if it's, you know, you know, the, you know the saying, you practice in private what you master in public or something like that? I think, it's, I think that's how it goes, yeah. There's a definite <laughs> saying like that, right? Oh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not doubting you. I mean, Maybe, maybe a little bit, but it sounds like something somebody a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> really accurate. Um, it, it, it's a it's a huge endeavor to to take. I'm glad there's. It's good that there's so many people on board, um, because I know with this with with my show having just me do it, like I did the book review thing for a while. Uh-huh. The, the amount of book reviews was insane, and I've got like. <laughs> There was no way, man. Like literally, I mean, I've done over a hundred interviews. If I had, if I had reviewed every single person's book, which I was trying to do, oh yeah, you know, I'd be dead. Um, <laughs> we're all gonna die at some point anyway. I'll, I'll try, but 
it's it's good to have more people on staff. Like, a, it's nice to have backup, I guess. Right. And in the Air Force, you realize this having a team is so important. Right. No, it, it, it really is. And then that's, I mean, and another important stipulation that we try to tell anybody that comes to work with us, it's like, you know, we'll put them through, a, I guess, you know, an interview process, so to speak, just kind of ask them questions. So that's one of the first things that we always bring up. We say, look, everybody on staff, including myself, everybody works pro bono. None of us make a profit off of this. Everything that we do is on our, it's on our own time. It's all voluntary. Yeah. And it's really important to start. I mean, to start with that because what I don't want to do is give people the wrong impression that oh yeah, by the way, you know, we're making money off of what you guys are telling us because that's that you know that kind of runs counter to what we're trying to do. Right. Yeah, because it's a service based thing. Right, and but it also helps us, and because like you were you were talking about having having a staff and having people that can help out. <clears throat> I couldn't do even like. If there were three of us, it was just, if it was just myself, Rafe, and JJ that were working on this, we wouldn't be able to make it through all of the material that we keep getting sent. Yeah. So, and it's that's always been something that's like, okay, well, can we find <laughs> can we find volunteers that are willing to help us out? And that's it's we've been very fortunate that the, that the uh, community has kind of reached out and said, okay, hey, yeah, what you know, what do you need? I'll I'll help out. It's an amazing thing you're doing, man. How can um, so? How do people go and subscribe to the newsletter? There's there's one there's one uh, month out right now, right? Last month was. Well, no, there's 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 <coughs> there's two months that are out right now. Um, I'm trying to think. We had um, it's, uh, I think it's our May and no, I'm sorry, it's our April and May editions are currently out. Uh, you can access them on there's a link in my Twitter profile. It's uh, steamblogger.com uh, forward slash writing dash community, and that's our temporary page. Um, our official page, uh, writingcom.com, is going to go live on the first of July, and that'll, co- that'll coincide with our um, with our July release. <laughs> Once that goes live, there's going to be same thing. It's just going to be a lot more information on it as, as well as. Um, you know, there's, there'll be your subscribe forms, also feedback forms. Uh, it's really important that we get get uh, community feedback on number one, how we're doing is this is the big thing. You know, uh, are we representing your material well? Is the material useful? Uh, is do you enjoy it? It's for us that's really important. Yeah. And it's also the website will also be a way to introduce all of our subscribers to our staff. So I mean, there's going to be staff bios on there. Uh, there's going to be contact info if they want a specific article from a, from a certain staff member um, written or a topic. There's going to be links to that so they can get a hold of them. So, I mean, we're, we're really excited for where this is going to go. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for you. I, uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. It's really cool that you uh, asked me to, to you know, have the show on there because this is, uh, I don't know, I, I just feel like in life there's certain things we can do right to to reach out to people to uh better our status in life to become different people better people i think there's no higher calling in life than service to others right and I oh, like, completely agree. yeah i think it's truly like the not not that it's noble or anything like that it's not like it's selfless i think what people misunderstand about service to others, it is it is a selfish approach. And here's what I mean by it. Here's what I mean by it. I'm because, listening. <laughs> because, because I'm uniquely qualified in certain areas of maybe conversating with people, um, of things of, because I wrote a book and I wanted people to see it, that mm-hmm. I have this desire to help other people's work be seen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it, it's this thing that if I didn't give a crap, if I hadn't written a book, <laughs> I didn't care if anybody read other people's books, I wouldn't I wouldn't give a crap about other people seeing other people's books, right. you know, it wouldn't be there. So mm-hmm. there's that selfish desire of I want that for other people because I want it for myself. Uh-huh. How do I get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and absolutely. I think, it's, I think it's true of all of us that and it, it's it's truly what makes us uh, uniquely unique characters in our own right like everybody has certain things in their life that happened that it's like because that happened i am passionate about x y or z right how can i fulfill that to the nth degree and help whoever else is struggling in that area to get to another day to move forward a little bit further 
you know, to become who they want, who they're supposed to become. Right. If we were all just, if, if it was just like a selfless approach, I wouldn't care about anything because I wouldn't be anybody, you know? I wouldn't have a self because I'd be selfless. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think it's great having a collaboration of all these people because you have so many different unique perspectives. Mm-hmm. And I think the best part of working with other people is finding out where their gift is. Right. And seeing somebody's gift and allowing them to use it to help other people in that same category. You know, because mm-hmm. that's where the real connection comes in. Because I've interviewed so many people and I connect with a lot of them, but I don't connect with everybody on the same level. But somebody else sees the interview and is like, oh my God, that hit me right there. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I completely agree. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you, you selfish son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody has a selfish side to them, you know. So that's that's just human nature. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's not, not our best qualities, qualities but <laughs> but I, I think I think there's it's like one of those things that has to be in balance. Like everything in our life has to be in balance. Mm-hmm. I think we can we obviously can take selfishness to a terrible side, but we can right. use it. We can use it for the for the good. We can use mm-hmm. it to drive us towards passion. And right. I think what you guys are doing is is just that. You're driving it towards a passion. You saw a need where everyone's screaming from the mountaintop and nobody's <laughs> being heard. Yeah. Thought, I want to correct this. Mm. I want to help people. Right. Yeah. No, and that's and that's definitely I mean that's I think I guess I'm on three or four times now saying it and you know, confirming it. But yeah, that's definitely what our that that is what our goal is. It's very much is what can we do to give back to the community because there's a lot of people. I mean, there may be some people who don't agree with it, but I know there are a lot of people that have been helped by the community. Whether it's a you know, you know, you see people, hey, you know, can I get somebody to beta read a couple of chapters for me? And you'll see somebody pop up, oh yeah, sure, you know, what do you got? You know, how many, what kind of word count, stuff like that. And so there are. There's plenty of people out there that either want to help or need help, but, you know, you're standing on that mountaintop, you're screaming, you're yelling, and you just kind of have to hope that that call out that you put out there, that somebody picks it up or somebody says, oh, hey, yeah, definitely, you know, all right, what can I do to help you out? Or, hey, you know, I need some help. Can you know, is somebody out there, can somebody assist me? Yeah. Always reaching out our hands for other people. That's <laughs> me, 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 right? <laughs> we're, we're helping one another. I'm so <laughs> <kidding. laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have had the guts to continue writing, to go into stand up, to do this show if it wasn't for the writing community. Oh, um, stand up. Yeah, stand-up comedy. You know what I'm going to ask, ask right now, right? Well, uh, let me hear a joke. Come on. Let me hear a joke. All my material is brand new. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> um, You're good, man. I've got, no, I actually I have one of my one of my sets is up on the YouTube is up on the YouTube channel. Six six minutes of pure laughter. Oh, I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of writing books right now i've been writing uh bits and like okay. jokes, which is totally different but if i didn't if i didn't have a show to like be in front of other people talking <clears throat> writing community if i didn't have that i wouldn't have had the guts to go try stand-up comedy which was a dream of mine i was just too scared right know? this having other people man i'm telling you it's <laughs> it's it's a beautiful part of life Definitely. Yeah, completely agree. I want to ask you, um, where do you see this going in the next five years? <laughs> As, uh, you know, I should be able to answer that, but um, I'll have to come up with something off the top of my head because I haven't, everything's been moving so fast that uh, I haven't had a chance to really sit down and figure out where do we want to take it. Um, but I would say that the biggest eventually we want to branch off of Twitter. We want to we want to engage on like Facebook, 
Instagram as much as we can. Um, we kind of we we do want to branch out. Whether or not we'll be able to, it just kind of depends on how firm we can get established on the website itself. Uh, we do want to start eventually. We're we're already starting to kick around um, paid advertising options because while we definitely we enjoy doing stuff for you and we love giving free advertisement out to people. Um, yeah. The goal is to make the website self-sufficient so that we can pay for that without having to pay out of pocket, but at the same time, bring in enough to give back to the community to say, okay, hey, you know, we'll buy X amount of books and we'll do reviews on it for people, or, you know, maybe we can, you know, throw some money out to a good publicist to get, you know, a, a bestseller author to come and do an interview with us or, or something, something along those lines. Yeah. But ultimately, like I would say our five year plan is really is just to, we want to branch out off of Twitter um, to try to you know, build up a Facebook, try and build a following out there along with some other social media platforms. Um, but the biggest thing is being able to start monetizing it to give more back to the community. Awesome. awesome. That's a great plan. Um, take over. I, 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 think, I think so. <laughs> the moment you start talking about money, people get kind of weird, like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing now. It's like, not... Nah, you, 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 you don't get it. <laughs> I know that, that's it's such a silly thing though. Like people have to eat, and people like I mean, and it costs money to host a website. Mm -hmm. you know, but like this is all all the stuff I do costs money, and it's not like I'm I'm making any. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> doing it. It's like all the stuff I'm doing is literally out of my pocket. Like I made book trailers and all this kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and book it's all out of my pocket, uh, which I don't think people understand up front because you're just they're like oh they just expect it of you all of a sudden but <laughs> it's real life too it's not like you know the internet right. seems like a shield of reality non-reality but it's i don't know uh <laughs> i think it's a great plan man take over the web bro <laughs> well, I mean, but we're not, we're not going, you know we're not thinking the brain we're not going for world domination but you know, this it is what if I can if I can get it to, I mean if I can get it to grow with the help of Ray from the JJ and the rest of our staff I mean that's definitely uh, that that is the goal that's definitely what we want to get to. I'll tell you the name Uniweb. It's it's because I I said where all people become one people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, unifying web of people. It's also because I would like to take over the internet in. <laughs> And instead of calling it the internet, call it, you know, Uniweb. It's just one one web that I've created where all of... <laughs> that's, that's the key that I created. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's my master plan. Um, okay. Well, I look forward to having the newsletter help you with that. That's... Thank you. Yeah, sounds... I need help. I need help having world domination takes more than one person. It's true. It does. <laughs> I'll get there. One day. Uh, do you have a favorite quote that you live by, or words of inspiration that you live by on a daily basis? I do. Um, it's not from a book. I apologize, you know, to all the authors out there. I can't say. Yeah, it's not something that I pulled from a book. It was. Um, what was it? It was it was a day I was helping somebody. We were moving, we were moving furniture around, and uh, at the end of the day, this took us like okay, well, some little backstory here. So, whenever the military or at least the Air Force procures furniture, they pick furniture that requires a technician to come in and assemble. It's stupid heavy. Uh, it's a huge pain to move around. And when it's time to replace it, it usually ends up in the trash. So um, they were going to demolish a building over here on base where we're at. And they sent, they, you know, they put a call out to the entire base and said, hey, you know, we've got furniture in here. If you guys can use it, come and get, you know, come grab it, take it, you can take it back to your section. It's like, great. No. Yeah. So I was helping another office. Um, they had some furniture they wanted to uh, they wanted to move. So we go up there. It's on the second floor. There's a small elevator. You're supposed to try to get this stuff out of. So three hours of work later, we successfully get two desks out mm -hmm. with 
damage to the furniture and we get it back we're, we get it back to the building we're outside in the truck and we're we're just kind of looking at it and i look at the other guy and i say hey man i don't know that this stuff is going to survive the trip up the stairs <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a regret. i'm looking at this stuff like yeah i don't man this may it's just it may not work it's probably it's probably not going to work and he's, he's looking at me and he looks at it he said yeah you might be right uh Okay, let, let me call my boss. So he, he calls his boss. His boss comes down from upstairs, <laughs> looks at it, and he says, uh, and, you know, we tell him our concerns, like, look, I mean, it looked new when we got it, but it was a pain trying to get it out, so it's looking a little rough right now. What are your thoughts? Do you want to keep it? And he said, you know what? I appreciate your work, but um, <laughs> he said, no, we know it was trash. So I can I can order more. <laughs> So it's like okay, it's like uh, all that work, and then my buddy was saying that he made he made some. Um, he wasn't no, not, not, none of us were upset. We thought it was really more humorous than anything, but yeah. he made a comment on you know, okay, well that was kind of a waste of time, and that was I just kind of looked at him. I said, well, you know what, dude? I mean, if time is money, sometimes I don't I don't mind wasting it. I mean, it's just it, it is what it is. <laughs> So, I mean, I, you could, I could say that might be a quote that I live by is, this, you know, yeah, time might be money, but every once in a while, there's nothing wrong with wasting it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if you think about it, we've been given quite a bit of money or time. <laughs> right. <laughs> like half of us, I mean, we kind of just accidentally waste it because you can only chase your dreams for so many hours of the day until you need a break. Otherwise, you go insane. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, what's his name? Stephen King wrote in um, The Shining. All work and no play make Jack a... A bad boy. Bad boy or whatever, yeah. You don't want to go, cra- you don't wanna go crazy. Right. You got to make it rain sometimes for no reason. But, yeah, assuming we're talking metaphorically, then absolutely. Yeah, definitely metaphorically. I don't have that kind of money. I mean, I, I wish I did. It'd be great to hold up, you know, a, a bill can and just, you know, make it rain. But unfortunately, that's just not in the, that's not in the cards right now. <laughs> well, Nate, I appreciate your time coming on the show, man. Um, I'm going to have all the, the links to uh, the writing community newsletter in the description, how people can sign up, all that kind of stuff. Um, and maybe this video will be in the newsletter. We'll see. Oh, if, oh. If, if we, can out, say, <laughs> we can at least put a link in there, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been a pleasure getting to talk to you, man. Uh, likewise, before you disconnect, just because I told them that I would do this, um, I, I kind of want to. I want to put a shout out to just two people to my two other admins. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, JJ or JJ Zanko at JJ Zanko and um, Rafe, who is. And, you know, I really, I don't know why I always mess up her uh, her Twitter handle here. It's uh, at TCBU2018. Um, I wouldn't be able to do this without either of them, uh, especially JJ, because he's kind of a guy that uh, he'll stop me from running amok with a brand new idea that I just came up with and just shoving it into play. He'll be, he'll be the first one to raise his hand up and be like, dude, not, not, not no, that's enough. Knock it off. <laughs> Just, just quit. Just calm down. All right. <laughs> those people are important. Absolutely. I mean, and that's you know, the, those are just the those are the first two. I mean, I love everybody else in the staff. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. It's my pleasure. I'll, I'll make sure to put them in the description of the video as well. Um, I love it. You go follow Nate. It's great talking to you, man. And we'll see you soon. Sounds good, man. All right, brother. Have all a good right. Day.